Okay, good day everyone and welcome to our August release webinar where we're going to explore and explain some of the new stuff that we added to the Hive um, in last week's release. What's exciting is that many of the things that we're going to see today were actually features that have been asked for by you and are all available now uh, in the Hive. In case you've not met me, my name is Andrew Colson. I'm the Community Engagement Advocate for Harvest. Um, and I'm joined today by Adam Smith, who's one of our founders, Tanya Reese, who is a customer success manager, and Gabby, who is um, one of our support desk uh, managers. Our thoughts are with all of you in lockdown this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are. Um, we know how exhausting it is. Um, we're just grateful that you could join us today. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. We extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people here today, as well extend to all other traditional owners joining us from foreign lands. So welcome to you from wherever you're joining us today. Please make sure you say hello and introduce yourself in the chat that we've got going on there. Uh, Gabby and Tanya and myself um, will be um, answering questions in the chat later on. But our goal for today's session is just to briefly explore the most recent high feature release and learn how to apply it to your next project. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Adam to get us started. Adam. Cool. Thanks, Andrew. Um, and thanks, everybody, for joining us. It there's a really big turnout here, which is great to see. Um, it's good to see so much excitement in this release. This release is all about creating uh, great digital content, which is which is a core strength of the Hive. Um, having good content is such an important part of being successful in online engagement, but it's frequently overlooked and uh, and underestimated. You know, the approach where we go out in the community and just pepper people with questions without providing enough information about the issues for people to actually leave inf informed um, feedback is really problematic and can undermine uh, our results. You know, I, I feel like there's limited uh, value in just getting random opinions without first providing people with the deep context, um, you know, to, to, to add some value and go a bit deeper than that surface level opinion. The content we often do produce is sort of locked away in PDF documents, which, you know, as we all know, nobody uh, really ever reads except for the kind of uh, the people that are really into it. Um, and it's just not good enough for the job. Good content provides that hook to get people interested. It inspires new people to get involved in the process. Uh, and we can use it to guide people along a journey that helps them learn and discover. So I hope this release provides uh, some new features and tools um, to help you take your content game to the new level. Uh, there's also a few bonus features that if we have time, we can talk about at the end. Uh, but really, this one's going to be all about content. So let's dive in and we'll take a look. Uh, I'm just going to hop on the Learning Center now. Um, all the documentation has been updated uh, on the Learning Center for you to be able to see this. And we've actually been introducing a, a new pattern into the Learning Center. Some of you may have come across this already. Um, and we're going to be rolling this out to some other tools. But just putting things in these three tabs. So we have an examples tab that is going to give you an idea of you know, what you can make these some of these tools look like. Uh, the settings is where you can get that kind of deep dive of what does he, each button and every little um, feature uh, do. And then the key actions is where you can get that kind of step-by-step -step instruction of how do I add a new feature? How do I change the appearance of this? How do I delete something? Uh, so hopefully that makes it a little bit more um, digestible when you go to look at the documentation for the tools. We're going to start by looking at three uh, three tools and the content improvements we've made to those. So that's feature grid, facts, and quote. Um, so the feature grid, for those of you who don't know, really lets you set up this kind of grid of content on your page. It can be static in the sense that it's just um, displaying information in a more attractive way, or it can also be dynamic. So you can set the, the grid content to actually link to another page, such as a sub page. And that's often how it gets used. It gets used as kind of a, a navigation menu. And it's a really great way to do that. Uh, in the feature grid, you can set up an image, a title, a description. And if you are linking to another page, you can also put like a call to action text, like learn more or read more. And traditionally, this was displayed as these kind of uh, these cards, uh, which I really love and I still think is a great pattern. We've now introduced uh, another way that you can display your feature grid 
content. Um, and that is in these panels. So a panel is sort of more of a horizontal orientation for the content. So you can see the images on the left and then you get the text on the, on the uh, right hand side there. So that's just a sort of a, a different way to, to kind of list that. We also have another option for panels, um, which is a smaller format. So if that image is too big or you've got a lot of things in your lists, uh, the panel small option um, will be really good for that. So you can see this looks really nice. Uh, panels, um, if you're listing things in a sidebar, is probably a better format than a, than a, a card. And just lets you um, think about various ways that you can link information together. One of the additional improvements that we've uh, we've made to this tool is the ability to choose an icon from the icon library. So previously you had to kind of upload an image if you wanted that in there, but now you can just jump into the icon library, um, uh, choose an icon that's relevant for your content, give it a color, and then even uh, choose the background um, content. So I might just show you quickly how how you do that. Um, just so you can get started. But I think it's really handy not, not to have to upload images and source images all the time uh, for this kind of content. Let's just take a look in the settings for this tool. Um, maybe we'll create a new feature. So if I wanted to add another panel to this, um, now you'll see there's three uh, options here. You can choose image, you can pick an icon, or you can even have none. Um, if we pick an icon, let's call this, maybe we'll call this parks and recreation. And uh, the way this works is you kind of search a keyword. So I'm looking for a, a picture of a tree uh, and there's lots of different options to choose from. Uh, I think this is probably the best one. And then we can choose a color for that icon. So maybe we'll make it like a dusty, a dusty brown. That's maybe not the best color. I don't know. What do you think, Tanya? Green? Yep, go with the green. Green, color. yep. And then we'll give it a kind of maybe lighten that background color so that there's you know contrast in there. I like to do that through this kind of this picker where you can just kind of you know visually adjust it and, and, and compare those two values. And we'll give it a title, parks and recreation. And we'll just say, uh, learn more about parks in the area. URL, this is where you would link this to another page or you could even link it to a file if you wanted. And uh, we'll just leave it blank for now, but you could also put in that call to action text, like learn more or read more. And then if we save that, you'll see we come back to the, uh, the main feature grid menu. And then if we save again, we'll see that we now have a tile for parks and recreation. So that's just a little quick win, but I, I really love the idea of introducing that this icon library um, into the tooling and giving you more options of ways to use the feature grid. Okay, next up, we're gonna look at the facts tool. So the facts tool, if you haven't used this, it's sort of similar in the feature grid in the sense that it's letting you kind of feature content, make that really visually apparent on the, uh, on the page. It was, initially conceived as a way to really pull out these compelling uh, statistics or um, pieces of information that really get people to, um, to pay attention. They see that and they think, wow, that's really important. Um, maybe I should get involved in that. But I think with some of the improvements we've done to this tool, we're, we're gonna kind of open this up um, as to how you can use it. So it doesn't have to be strictly for uh, facts anymore. You can use it in a variety of ways. So if you haven't used this tool before, it lets you sort of set in uh, some, um, some text content. You can use some highlighting functions to actually emphasize uh, and call out certain bits of that text. And you can choose a color that colorizes the border um, along with that, that highlighted text. Uh, in the past, it kind of took this um, mosaic uh, approach, which was the size of the, the fax card depended on how much content there was in there. So you get this kind of layered approach. Uh, but what we've done now is we've actually let you set that to like a grid option so that the fax cards have a real uniform uh, height and size. So if you've got lots of them, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's more appropriate. It's really just a visual preferencing. There's no right or wrong answer for it. 
Um, but again, we've, we're allowing you to add the icon um, asset into the fax cards, which I think adds just so much value because they look fantastic. You can see these are some that Gabby uh, created for us. Um, and and they, just, they just look so great sitting on the page. So you can choose that icon. Um, you can also decide whether you just want to use the icon on its own or set that within a circle, um, which is what, what we're looking at here. We've also given you some options as to how you want to set the text. So you can choose you know, small text like you see here or the really large stuff if you want to make it um, oversized. You can set the alignment of this. So whether it's um, centered like you see here or even right justify it. And the final change there was previously, uh, if you didn't put a source in for the fact, so that's sort of like, you know, if you are citing an actual statistic, you can reference the original source. Um, it, would, uh, it would still have that word source at the bottom, which is a bit strange if you're not using it in exactly that context. Uh, so that's now gone. So if you don't provide any content there, that will, um, that will disappear. So that's sort of uh, the wrap up on this tool. But I, I think, again, I'm really excited to see how, um, how the use cases of this tool uh, can expand and we can start doing some, some different things uh, with it. And I know, Andrew, you have some ideas for this that we'll look at maybe in one second. But I'll just cover off the, the final tool here, which is improvements to the quote tool. So the block, tool, uh, block quote, as it's called in your um, interface, has been around for a while. Uh, there were a few different style options to choose from in that one. They were pretty outdated, I have to say. Um, I didn't see the, this get being used a whole lot. Um, so we've kind of refreshed those styles uh, and added some new ones that, that, that um, make them look fantastic. So I think there's eight different options that you can choose now. Uh, this one is kind of a, a call out style. So this is perfect for, for featuring um, a piece of feedback that maybe a participant uh, gave you either through an online um, survey or an event uh, and really just calling out that kind of uh, some of that feedback. Uh, this one is just very plain, sort of puts a border on top there and you can see that um, this content is actually colorized. So you have the option to choose a color option, which will take that color from the main, uh, from your main theme uh, and apply that color to it. So it's not freestyle like um, it is in the facts tool where you can pick any color. This is sort of uh, making sure that it fits within your theme. Uh, but you can see here, you can use this now for, you know, not just quotes, but just standing out messaging on your page. So this is just an important kind of key announcement. Uh, also, there's some options here to, you know, really emphasize actual quotes. So we've got these kind of visual quotation marks that just add a bit of interest to your page uh, and really make that stand out. And you can use this to sort of break up your content, which I, I like. If you've got a lot of text, maybe break it up with a, with a quote. Uh, and the final two styles, which I really like, is just a simple kind of um, uh, vertical line on the edge. This one is not colorized. So if it's not colorized, it just gets a kind of gray, gray scale. So if you want it to blend into the background, uh, you can choose to do that. And you can kind of set the, um, you know, how, how far this spans, if it's going to span the whole content area, or if you want it to be a little bit more constrained. And the final style uh, is similar to the one above. It just has a background. I really love this style. I don't know why. I think this is my favorite one. Um, I think I like it because it shows you that you can use it not just for quotes. I used it in this case um, to create like an alert. Like this is a construction alert that's going to affect you. Put it right at the top of the page. Um, so I think there's there's some new opportunities of uh, of how to kind of uh, apply this tool. And without going into too much detail about all the different settings, we'll just take a look to show you how this is structured. Um, I'll just look at one of these examples. You can see in, under the basic tab, it's where you're just going to put the actual content uh, and the source if you have one, if you're using it in a quote. Uh, and under display here, there's now eight different styles that you can choose from. You can adjust that font size. You can adjust the font weight. So the font weight means the sort of bolding of it, like how heavy is that font. 
and uh, adjust the alignment and then choose between that kind of colorized option or the grayscale option. So those are all new properties in there. Um, so there's a lot of different combinations that you can actually uh, create with that. Um, but I'm curious, Andrew is sort of, a, you know, a practitioner of community engagement. Like, how do you see some of these, um, some of these tools being used in practice? Yeah, I mean, in community engagement, uh, one of the things obviously that's really crucial towards the end of a project is that ability to close the loop. Uh, with our community um, and it doesn't have to be at the end of the project it could be going through the project you've concluded stage one gone on to stage two but you want to give them a little bit of an update on what's going on um, and so uh, we've got that news feed or add update function within the hive uh, which is really useful now we're probably all aware of our demo site the hive demo site <clears throat> and our very popular children's art competition that we have on our demo site um, it's a demo page that's been running for a couple of years now um, and actually gets uh, contributions almost on a weekly basis from children who, for some reason or another, like to provide us with their art. So what I've actually done is using that add update function, I've created a new story uh, using one of those new news feed cards. Um, you can see here in the news block. And if I click through to the, the update, what I've done on the update is going through the report and the stats from the page. Um, I've created a update on the project um, with all the stats using those new functionalities in the, fa the fact cards and the quotes. So you can see here, visitors and contributions, a nice quote from myself, um, some more interaction and submission numbers, Again, uh, using a different form of the quote there just to highlight um, some of the text and then some more stats followed by one of the ch children's images um, and then right at the bottom, a quote about that image that someone had actually left um, about that particular image, which is currently the top, top scoring image. So it's, it's a really nice thing to do, obviously, feedback to your community, close the loop, let them know what you've heard, tell them what you might be going forward with, how their comments, uh, their um, submissions are going to shape the project that you're working on um, with these new fact cards, quotes cards, and obviously the feature grid as well. You can really build out some nice updates, new stories and close the loop out with your community. Yeah, I think such such a good idea. I'm not sure if we have anybody from uh, Northern Beaches here today, but um, they have been doing this for a while. They kind of just do a bit of a recap. I, I'm not sure in the sense of sending the updates out to people, but just doing that kind of summary after the feedback comes in using the facts tool. So they're going to be able to make that look so much better now. Um, we did have one question uh, from Soundforce, uh, just about can the she asked if the facts cool tool can just uh, be used with one column and take up the width of the content area. Uh, I just looked into that some for uh, the answer is no, you have to choose at least two, two columns is the minimum. Um, I'm not sure how it look with just the one, it might be a bit big, but I, again, you could use the feature grid in theory um, to create a one column layout. Except for the sidebar, I think when you put it on the sidebar, it's automatically just one. Yeah, good point, Gabby. Yeah, so I think if you drop it in the sidebar, it automatically scales into one column, or of course on a mobile device. But in a max width setting, I think the minimum you can choose is two. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for that, Andrew. Um, we might go on to our next feature, which is uh, adding videos to forms and surveys. So I'll just get back to my screen. And I think this is just sort of building on a theme that you've probably seen in a lot of our past releases, which is how do we make surveys more engaging and interesting, right? If they're the tool that gets used 98% of the time, um, then how do, we, how do we change that situation? So it's not just questions, it's actually can be a kind of a learning experience or actually an engaging experience. Um, I think key to that uh, is, being able to leverage your video content into the forms themselves. Um, and so we've now added the ability to embed 
uh, videos directly in your surveys. So I'll give you an example of that. This is um, using the flow template of the form. So if, you, if you're not familiar with this, I would look into it. It's an option of how you can display uh, forms or surveys and it kind of takes over this full screen. And I, I, I really love it. I think we should be using this in you know, the majority of um, cases because it's so much better than just seeing all the questions on the page. So this is my placemaking survey. Uh, I've added a content screen in here that just says what is placemaking with an image. Uh, I have a question which is uses some of these kind of um, uh, images to make it a little more interesting. What are the three most important elements of place? And then uh, this is where I brought in a video. So this is just helping people to understand what placemaking is. And so I've done this as a content screen where we can bring in uh, a title, a description, uh, as well as that video. Now video, like anywhere else in the platform, needs to be embedded from either YouTube or Vimeo. So you need to grab that, um, that share link. Remember to grab the, the actual uh, link below the video and not the whole page URL. That won't work uh, when you do this, uh, but you can kind of drop that in. Um, that's pretty much it. I'll just maybe show you how that gets set up in, in the survey itself so you know where to find that. There'll be two options for you to choose from depending on the, the type of survey that you're creating. Um, so if we go into the, the form editor here, under the elements tab, which is where I see all my question types. And then under this sub tab content, um, you can see there's now a video option. And if you add the video option, all you're gonna get is the video. So if you're doing a, you know, a traditional survey where all the questions are on the page, that's probably fine. Uh, but if you wanna create what I just created, which is video with some other content around it, that's where you choose the content screen. So if we look in the content screen, there's additional options to choose between the type of media that you want. Uh, this is, you can choose the image or the video and then add that share link there. And you can also adjust whether you want that video to be uh, on top of the content or below it and change a few other properties like its alignment and, and its width, et cetera. So if I just save this, sorry, I'm just struggling to see the controls. Just save that. And then we preview this survey, which is the way that you should always be um, looking at your surveys. If we go down to the video question, you can see we get the title. And then we get the content below it. So yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm not sure if that excites anybody or not. But yeah, I do think that video is just such a great format uh, to work in online engagement and being able to bring these into the videos is, is a powerful tool. Cool. Um, I think that brings us to pretty much our final um, feature, which is more of a kind of enhancement here, um, which is some additional page templates. So within the Hive, every page um, has a template and you have a few different options to choose from. Uh, some of you might not have known this, but you can actually change the layout of the page. Typically people like that kind of two column approach where there's a main content area and a sidebar area for supplementary content. Um, but as you can see from this example, I just have a single column here. This is the, actually the narrow um, template. Uh, and you can kind of adjust um, those page templates depending on, on the needs of your content. So we have introduced uh, a bunch of new page templates. Um, everybody's going to get what's called the, the, let's just go down here to this diagram. So this is sort of the, the diagrammatic view of it. Um, the first three are the existing page templates in the Hive. Um, and then we're adding a left sidebar. So that's sort of a mirror um, of the right sidebar. I think the key thing to note here is that often people uh, struggle with the right sidebar because on mo mobile devices, the content actually shifts under the main content. Whereas uh, with the left sidebar, we've designed that to stay on top. So if you've got something really important like your survey or your timeline that's critical for people to see, they'll be able to get that first um, before they read the kind of main content area. 
If you're a premium subscriber, you're going to get three new uh, advanced page templates um, that provide a kind of a, a various mix of content areas. So you're going to actually have um, a whole bunch of different areas to, to play around with. And, uh, and this final one is story, which is sort of a um, alternating narrow and wide content areas. If that's a little bit um, abstract, I've got uh, some examples down here that kind of show these in action. So there's just an image gallery that show, you know, what the full template could look like. Um, the right sidebar, this is the ones that we're all, all used to. This is an example of the left sidebar. And then we've got some uh, examples of those kind of more mixed ones. So uh, the right sidebar feature, you can see we've got the main content er uh, area here, and we've got a timeline sitting off to the left. And we've used a call to action, and that's spanning the full width of the content. And then we repeat that pattern again. So you can do some really cool things with this. You could also do some really uncool things with this, um, <laughs> probably has to be said. So I think if you don't really know exactly what you're doing, I would probably tend to, to maybe uh, get somebody to help you with this or, or stay away with them because you can certainly overload this and um, make this look, look a bit funny. But the template that I really like is this, um, is this story option. So that's that, the, the example that I gave where you have text and then you have slightly wider media. And I know, Tanya, you've sort of worked up an example to, um, uh, to demonstrate how this could be applied in, a, in an actual engagement. So I might throw it over to you to, to go through that. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, I really do like the the story template. So it's um it's a really nice template that gives you uh, an attractive way to you know show really high quality content to you know um, to your audiences um, in a really dynamic and highly visual format. So let me just bring up my screen. Okay, so you can see here. Um, so it works off a one column. Uh, format and it really provides an emphasis on the experience of storytelling and so you can break up your content um, your blocks of content into either full or standard width so you can see here you've got some of your text content and then it's broken up into you know more of a full screen um, full screen image so it's really good for emphasizing your um, things like visual content like hotspot uh, we've also got further down images are uh, also really good for things like the slider tool as well because it gives a bit more of a, a focus into I guess those visual things that you really want your your community to look at so uh, in the example here I've also got um, a couple of the quote tools which were popped in as well um, just to really highlight some of that information to the, um, to the audience so there's a, there's a lot that you can do with this. And you can see we've got the VR tool here, which has turned out quite nicely in the full size width. So using the template um, is exactly the same as your other templates. You can drop and drag into these different sections. And it just really comes up looking really, really fresh um, and then really dynamic as well too. Yeah, it looks great. I think... Um... Yeah, the idea is sort of like rather than having this uniform content area that smushes everything to the same, you can break out the media, you know, a little bit wider and kind of add that diversity so it doesn't become so monotonous. But really think about um, applying this in that kind of story environment where we're telling like a long linear narrative that people scroll through. Um, I would say that probably like the principles of this are like, um, don't put more than uh, one piece of media in those wider areas, it's like it's designed for, you know, one image, one video, one um, hotspot tool. If you start to put lots of different ones uh, in there, I think it's gonna it will look a bit bizarre. So just keep in mind the purpose of that um, when you're creating that content. Cool, thank you, Tanya. Um, that's really good. I think that's we're pretty much right on time here. Uh, I may just mention two more things um, quickly, and then we'll kind of go to some questions. And if people have to drop off, that's all good. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, we've spent a lot of effort overhauling all the content on the Learning Center in the Pages section. Pages are critical to how the Hive works. 
So if you really want to be a, a master, you have to kind of understand uh, all these aspects of pages. So um, there's really detailed information about how all this stuff works, what are your options, um, how you can leverage uh, all of this stuff. So I would encourage you to just, just go through and have a, a read, um, particularly all these different functions that you can kind of perform on here. Uh, that's all been updated. So um, hopefully it's uh, written a bit better. And then the final thing to say about pages is another feature that we have introduced here, which is sort of a minor feature. It's not really content related, uh, but it has been something that's uh, kind of uh, been a little bit of a pain point for people. You can now search your pages. So if you've been using the Hive for a while, you probably have tons and tons and tons of pages. Um, this thing, if you ever try to use it, would throw you uh, an error and say this function is disabled. Uh, and there were some technical reasons for why that was the case. Uh, but now if you come in and type a uh, the name of a page, it will do that search for you and return all the pages. So if you've accidentally published something and you don't know where, where it is, because it's maybe in the wrong location, you can just jump into the sitemap um, in the dashboard and, and type in the page name and hopefully uh, find it. So that's pretty much the wrap. Um, we will take some questions from there, unless uh, Andrew or Tanya, do you have any other comments? No, um, there were a couple of questions in the, the, the Q&A, but I think we've answered those. So guys, yeah, thank you to Adam, Tanya and Gabby there. Um, if you have got any questions, let us know um, before you leave. Um, the video will be up on the, the Learning Center soon. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you found the session useful and are excited about using these new features. Please check out the updated pages on the Learning Center, uh, which provide more details on all the featured updates. And once the video is up, share it with your colleagues so they know how to use them as well. We look forward to seeing you at another session very soon, and we hope you've had a lovely day. Uh, goodbye from Team Harvest, um, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.